There's a fine line to be drawn between making a political statement and inciting someone to start breaking out the rifles and taking shots. A weekend in Texas has the nation talking. In the wake of 9-11, how America dealt with the enemy and psych warfare changed forever. And the American Psychological Association has some explaining to do about their role. And release your inner nerd. Embrace a day where people of all ages and creeds can shout with dignity, may the fourth be with you. But don't bring Jar Jar Binks. I'm Ed Berliner. I am not your father. But you will follow me for the next hour. This is Midpoint. Police officers have been shot. Two suspects have been shot. Possibly have explosives on them, okay? That's what we're worried about right now. We are going to move y'all into the auditorium here in just a minute. I just need everybody to remain calm, be kind of orderly, and we're going to take you into the auditorium a little further away from the front of this building, all right? Were the suspects Muslim? I have no idea right now. To a certain faction of the Muslim community, there is nothing currently more offensive than those who defame the Prophet Muhammad in any form. Cartoons are only the latest concern after the attack on the Charlie Hebdo offices in France. So knowing how vitriolic such depictions are, why would anyone tempt fate by not only holding a competition to draw cartoons about Muhammad, but then offer a $10,000 prize to the person who drew the best version? One that would not in any way likely be considered flattering. It happened outside Dallas on Sunday, and the organization that put it all together is now being called out for putting innocent people in harm's way. First up, an organizer of the event, vice president, co-founder of the American Freedom Defense Initiative, Robert Spencer. Next, regional operations director for CARE Florida, the Council for American Islamic Relations, Nezar Hamze joins us. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having us on. Thank you. Robert, you've been on this show many times before. We have talked about this and issues like this in so many different ways. However, I do have to be very blunt here. There are people looking at this as nothing more than an attack on the Muslim community. You are flaunting it in their face, they're saying. You are throwing this out there, that you are just making fun of Muhammad for nothing more than to make a buck. And somebody came out and took shots. You could have had innocent people killed. Are you sorry for what happened? Are you, are you sorry for having the event in the first place and having a cartoon competition? Ed, I'll tell you. I'm very sorry that the policeman was shot, and I'm very glad that he does not have life-threatening injuries. I'm very glad that we had the contest, and I think that the incident itself shows how crucial this event was. And we plan to have many more now as a result of this, because it shows that uh, there is a, f a d concerted effort to force Americans to, into silence and submission to Sharia blasphemy laws. There is a concerted effort to intimidate Americans into silence and to be afraid to utter the slightest criticism of Islam. Well, wait a minute, hang on a sec, Robert. Issuing criticism is one thing. Are you telling me that you're going to have cartoon competitions again for people to draw captions and cartoons of Muhammad? You're going to do this in other cities? Absolutely, Ed. We have to now, because if Why we do don't, then to? we are sending the message that we will bow to violent intimidation. If we don't, we're sending the message that, yes, you can kill us, you can shoot us, you can threaten us, and we'll submit. And that means that anybody, if I don't like what you're but saying, Robert, then I can the just point. come out and say, though, Robert, I'm going to kill you. You know that what you're doing you right out of silent. the box is you're doing something that people find offensive. Why do that in the first place? The, the freedom of speech was put into the First Amendment precisely to protect speech that others found offensive, particularly the powerful, when they were offended by challenges from the powerless. It was a fundamental bulwark against tyranny, and that's what it remains. All right, Nizar, I'm going to bring you in on this. If we capacity to offend, we cannot live with one another in a pluralistic society. All right, if we don't have the right to offend is what Robert Spencer is saying here, Nizar, and he's saying that that is at the crux of the issue. Do you see it from that perspective, or do you see this as nothing more than a blatant attempt to try to stir up and foment hate against Muslims. Yeah, first, uh, thanks for having me on the show. And I, I want to be very clear that, uh, you know, a, a great job by the Garland PD and a quick hoorah to the uh, police uh, that responded and the security officer that were defending the citizens from, from these uh, gunmen. Um, listen, it, this is not very complicated. Um, Robert Spencer and his associates um, used the freedom of speech and they propagate against Islam and against Muslims. And they absolutely have the right to do that. However, like you mentioned, Ed, there are those, these Muslim extremists, that use these incidents as a reason to attack. Now, 
are we going to balance human life or are we going to use our common sense? Now, what you're saying, if they continue to do this, is it is it going to cause human life or possibly a worse type of tech? Absolutely, because we don't need to uh, experiment and find out if their Muslim extremists are going to attack because we know they're going to attack. So that narrative of our First Amendment speech and we can continue to do this, absolutely, they well, can do that. Here's one of the cartoons here that we're showing right now, and it is when it comes to religion, I've got the edge. It is obviously a, a Muslim depiction of, a, of an ayatollah, whatever. Uh, it, it is very, very offensive in many ways. It has a bloody knife that's on it. I mean, Robert, come on. I mean, let's get right down to being honest here. You're doing, you're inciting violence here. You can use your freedom of speech, Ed. but you're going at people and you're telling them this is all about blood. Couldn't you have done something else? Ed, I'll tell you something. You're talking to me after somebody tried to murder me. You're talking to me after somebody tried to commit mass murder at an event I was holding. But they murdered, and they you're tried to commit I'm mass murder, to Robert, because the you people started who are this inciting with the to incitement violence are the, the people who say, oh, excuse me, are you going to let me answer or what? Please, go ahead. The people who are inciting to violence are the people who say that, that th this kind of criticism, why would we have a bloody knife in a picture of Muhammad if there weren't so much blood spilled in the name of Muhammad by Muslims when they say they're doing it for Muhammad? Okay, let me stop you there. Place. I have to stop and you there because the I'm going to go to Nizar on this and I want him to answer that. Are Nizar, let's, let's, Nizar, I'm sorry, Robert, I've got to tone you down a minute, but Nizar, I have to say that because Robert makes a point. In many places, it is seen that there is, there is that Muslim faction, that radical faction that's out there that does look to kill at any cost, any time they can. So can we at least say that he is saying what many people feel and that there is a smidgen of truth to that? L listen, um, there's only two winners in this situation, in this tragedy that happened in Texas. The anti-Muslim extremists that use this very sliver version of Islam and propaganda saying that it promotes violence, and also the Muslim extremists that use that same sliver of, of, of their understanding of Islam to fight back. So here we have anti-Muslim extremists propagating, say, look, the Muhammad is, Prophet Muhammad is very violent. He says, kill. The Muslim extremists are saying, look, these people are attacking the Prophet Muhammad, let's kill. Now, th this is the, these are the only two winners in this situation. The losers is everybody else in society, everyone else that's trying to live peacefully and trying to be productive, and that's the reality. If they continue, and you know, God bless them. Get, you know, God bless America and thank God we live here. But let's use our head and let's, let's come up with a more productive way because they're, they're reasoning and they're, they're, uh, the way they're approaching this is absolutely not working. The only thing that it's doing is dividing the American Muslim community from the rest of the American society and creating hate. And that's the reality. Are they just then, in your opinion, is are just doing this for no other reason than, and this is your opinion, to stir up hate, to stir the pot, and to make a buck on the outside? I think that they're doing this strategically to make sh anything having to do with Muslim, everything having to do with Islam, they are strategically dividing and creating a separation between the rest of the Muslim community and the greater American society. That's all they're doing, and obviously they're making a pretty good buck if Robert, you look at these Robert, guys. you have to admit, though, that in all of this, there are people who say this is just a marketing ploy, you're using this to make a buck, and you're using it to Ed, incite you know, violence. You keep saying Can't this. you back up? We Can't spent, you back up a little bit, though, Robert, and not use the blood? We spent upwards of $20,000. We spent upwards of twenty thousand dollars on private security, ten thousand dollars on the police. And there was we are a shooting losing there money on this event. Nobody killed. is making a buck here. That is a calumny by your Hamas linked care representative. You, that hold, is hold on, hold on. Are, are we in a circus show here? here. Robert, are we in a circus show? We're here talking we about God, we're talking about to Texas, violent intimidation. And you're talking some about hang on one second. Hang on, Nizar. Hold on one second, Nizar. Hold on one second, Robert. Okay. Fifteen seconds. I never go ahead. interrupted that man. Right. Go ahead, Robert. If we Fifteen seconds. To violent intimidation. We're only going to get more violent intimidation. We have to stand up at a certain point, or the violent intimidation is only going to continue. If we submit to threats to murder, then we're only going to get more threats to murder. And what this man is saying is, yes, we should surrender, we should submit, and we should self-censor in a with Sharia blasphemy laws. Okay, Nazar, to you, 20 seconds, you get last word. That is the gnarliest bunch of malarkey that I have heard all day. Robert, you just hit the nail on your head. You just admitted you spent $20,000 on security. Why? Because you're afraid protesters 30, are going to... 30000 I'm sorry, 30000 You spent No, 30, because 000. of your violent co religionists that you're doing nothing okay. except telling FBI not to... telling Muslims not to cooperate with the FBI. You're doing That's nothing all to propaganda. Rein them in. That is all propaganda. Please, I, I stop speaking. Care issues. Don't talk to the Can FBI. I please all right, answers? gentlemen, I'm afraid we're going to have to call this... Uh, we're going to have to call this to the moment right here. We're out of time, unfortunately. We are going to come back and do this again. I thank you both for, your, both for your passion and for being a part of the discussion. Robert Spencer and Nezar Hamza, Breaking Back, Midpoint, where we question everything.
Welcome back to Midpoint, everybody. We have made an executive decision here because, quite frankly, what happened in Dallas or in a suburb of Dallas over the weekend is becoming a national discourse at the moment, and we have a discourse going here, as a matter of fact, with one of the people who was involved in the actual event and someone we have had on the show before who was able to bring us a different perspective on the America Muslim issue. First of all, Robert Spencer is with the group, the American Defense for Freedom Initiative, that was there, or I should say, American Freedom Defense Initiative. Sorry, Robert, I'll get it right for you. He is president and co-founder of that, and also the other gentleman, Regional Vice Operations president. Director for CARE Florida, Nezar Hamza. All right, gentlemen, look, we brought everybody back here because it was starting to get a little heated here. Let's take a breath, okay? Everybody, let's take a breath on this. Nezar, first of all, I'm going to come to you this time. In the sound clip that we played coming into the very first break, the very first segment, when they announced that there were problems outside, you heard someone say, are they Muslim? It was the first thing that came to their mind. What does that tell you then about this event, about people who then are trying to use freedom of speech, in your opinion, to push forward their own agenda to paint all Muslims as bad? Um, first, I want to apologize to Robert. I, I apologize for cutting you off. I shouldn't have done that, and I won't do that again. Um, but w when you look at the people that are attending the event, um, you know, that statement doesn't surprise me, obviously. I think the, the issue is uh, that the, this narrative of Islam is evil, Muslims are evil, keep them out of America. Listen, the, uh, there are millions of American Muslims, period. I know a lot of people don't like that. You know, it's too bad. However, <coughs> to, to make these hate events, to make these propaganda events saying that Islam is here to take over, Sharia law is here to take over, all this same stuff, all that does is breed division and hate. Now, like Robert, we are actually concerned in making an effort to deal with the Muslim extremist. However, the solution is not, is not to paint all American Muslims with a broad brush, to paint the, the 1.7 billion Muslims in the, in the, the world as uh, following a religion of evil. That's the problem. And I think if you continue to have these events, Robert, you have to know we, there's no uh, discretion, there's no uh, question that you will bring out the crazies. You know that. And I'm not saying for you to, 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 to be quiet or shut up and stop uh, uh, doing your, your activities, but you have to be, approach it balanced because we're talking about American citizens and their safety. And that's, our, that's my issue. That's the reality. Robert? Uh, you know, Patrick Henry said, give me liberty or give me death. Wait a minute, but and, you, no, 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 uh, please what the st question stay is on here. the issue here. Please stay on the issue. Okay. Excuse me, I'm right on the issue, Ed. Why do you keep interrupting me? You never interrupt Nazar Hamza. I don't understand this. What's with the prosecutorial tone? There's no you prosecution here whatsoever, Robert. We're only trying to get down to the facts here, and all I'm saying is let's stick Henry to where said, we are. give me liberty or give me death, and that is the foundation of what we are trying to do, that we are saying that the, we are not going to bow to violent intimidation, that what he is actually counseling is that we all submit and conform to what these people who say they're going to kill us want us not to say. And that is the road to tyranny. That is the road to enabling a thugocracy in which the people who will kill the most number of people will get their way. And we cannot have a society like that. That is obviously inimical to a free society. And so give me liberty and give, or give me death is exactly on point, Ed. And the point is that what we are doing is saying, no, we are not going to be cowed into silence. We are not going to submit. We are going to maintain the principles of free discourse as enunciated by Voltaire. I may disagree with what you say, but I will defend to the death your right to say it. Okay, if then. Nezar Hamza really believed in free speech, he would come and stand with us at one of these events instead of denouncing us and demonizing us and smearing and defaming us. Robert, then, okay, then saying, let me say, yes, let me I interrupt. Like I'm sorry cartoons, because we only have so much time and I want to make sure we get some right things in here. Up. With regard to all this, I understand, but would you not at least understand, if you can, that if you have this sort of an event, you're giving away a prize for people to basically defame someone, a deity, if you will. How would you feel if certainly, and by the way, if you don't mind my asking, Robert, what religion are you? Ed, I'm a Christian, and I'll okay, tell you something. On, when okay, they put the hang crucifix on, hold on, in the Robert. jar of urine, hold on, I Robert. Thought, that's not very hold good. Hold on, Robert. But I'm just asking them. a question, Robert. You're a Christian. I you believe it. in Jesus Christ, then. If someone were to have a competition yeah. offering a $10,000 prize for showing pictures of Christ being cartoonized, if you will, illustrated with blood and with anything that you would find reprehensible, wouldn't you be insulted by that? You know, I probably would, Ed, but the thing is, I wouldn't kill them. I wouldn't get an AK and go start shooting. And I would not say 
that if there were people who were out there who were shooting those people, that they shouldn't be doing it. I would say, no, the freedom of speech has to be protected because it's the cornerstone of a free society. And so I stand with those people, even if I find what they do offensive. The Charlie Hebdo cartoonists, I stand with them. They insulted Christianity all the time. But there is a principle here about the nature of a pluralistic society that we have to put up with offense and with people who view core values in a vastly different way from how we do. Okay, so Nezar, about a minute left here, and we're going to come back for another segment here after this. But in a minute that I have left here, would you be willing then, and would CARE be willing, to put themselves on the line and be at events like this, perhaps if you could, or some sort of events like this, and do whatever you can to pull the crazies out of this and to make some people understand who you are and what you're doing so that the rest of the population doesn't see every Muslim as a killer? Ed, first, uh, you know, you know, I've told you before. I only speak for Care Florida. I do yes. not speak for Care in DC. Agreed. So, um, we would absolutely be willing to sit down. But here's the issue: when you're going to events that are depicting and insulting, just for the sake of freedom of speech, and just for the sake to say, "Hey, we can do it because we're doing it," what would be the advantage, and what would why would we go participate in that? It makes absolutely no sense. Listen, I would not encourage, I would not have anybody depict any, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, anyone's religious figure because, you know, that's, it's really, it's hate and it's anti-American. That is not what our country is founded for. Right. Now, obviously, Robert has a different perspective and that's fine, but that, it just, we have to use our head. Okay. It, I'm going to ask you both to stand by because we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We have a short segment coming back, but we've been going at each other here. Let's at least see if we can find some solutions here because... We need to bring the rhetoric down on both sides here. Hang tight. Robert Spencer, Nezar Hamza will be back as we continue right here on Midpoint. Let's turn into a spirited debate here. We welcome back the vice president and co-founder of the American Freedom Defense Initiative, Robert Spencer, and regional operations director for CARE Florida, the Council for American Islamic Relations, Nezar Hamza. Robert, I want to give you a chance to talk about freedom of speech here as well, because this is something that many people talk about here in America. Freedom of speech, and I'm going to bring you back now to a case that is Schenck versus the United States in 1919, which is part of the freedom of speech doctrines in this country. It says, freedom of speech does not include the right to incite actions that would harm others. For example, shouting fire in a crowded theater. That has been sitting here for many years. You also have freedom of speech, including the right to use certain offensive words and phrases to convey political messages. That's Cohen versus California in 1971. Let me first bring you down to inciting actions that would harm others. Do you believe that that's what you did? No, of course not, Ed. The whole thing is out of focus. You, you know, it's all about, uh, this whole show has been about how our contest incited violence. We never told anybody to commit any acts of violence. We never called for violence. We never condoned violence. The people who are inciting violence are the people who are on Twitter saying, look at the Kufar having a uh, conference drawing Muhammad. We have to go kill them. Those are the people inciting violence. Those are the people to whom that, uh, that, that act in 1919 applies. The reality is that the onus ought to be on what is the Muslim community doing, what is CARE doing, to stop Muslims from thinking that they need to kill in accord with Sharia's death penalty for blasphemy. That's where the focus ought to be. These are just cartoons. When they put the crucifix in the jar of urine, it, be, it, it won an NEA award. Christians were incensed, but nobody was killed, nobody was harmed, nobody was threatened. And Christians understand what it means to live in a pluralistic society. And that is the point that we were making with this conference, that Muslims need to learn this too, that this is something that is not acceptable in America, to have violent threats and violent intimidation over something that's just a cartoon, that's just a little bit of satire, and that we have to stand against that violent intimidation, or the victory that it wins will only encourage it to do more violent okay, intimidation. Okay, I have to stop you there only because I have a little time left here and I want to give Nazar a chance to come back here because I think Robert makes a very good point, Nazar, that many people are pointing out with regard to freedom of speech here in America. What is CARE and what are others doing in order to help shut down those in this country, those in any country as a matter of fact, who would simply look to use this as a reason to incite violence of their own, to drive it home, and to bring up those, if you will, the, the terroristic side of the Muslim faith. What is CARE doing? Um, Ed, first, I, I want to go back and say, you know, everything that uh, Robert just said, I, I agree with. And you know, I come from a, a different mold and, and we uh, have different perspectives. You know, CARE is not a monolithic organization. So, uh, Robert, I agree with you. 
However, the, the issue is here is standing up for the principle of freedom of speech balanced against human life. Now, uh, there's no um, uh, mystery that when the few uh, radical Muslims that are insulted um, are in, incited by uh, uh, events like this. I only like got 30 seconds left, problem. Azar. What is CARE doing? Well, you know, we, I've been on the show before, Ed, and I've told you very clearly, we actively are trying to work with the government and the FBI, uh, believe it or not, and the Department of Homeland Security and spreading the message of tolerance and using the platforms, using the platform at the pulpit in the mosque to spread a, a, a message of tolerance and to give the examples of the prophet. What did the prophet do when he was insulted? He did not order these people killed. The prophet Muhammad was very tolerant. He was very, very respectful and gave everybody the opportunity to speak. Okay, I only have 15 seconds left Asma very bin briefly. Marwan. He had her killed. Robert, what city will you what be doing this in next? Robert, what city will you be doing this in next? Robert, what city will you be doing this in next? Da, not, not, not set yet, Ed, but we'll keep you posted. And, Please uh, do. Please congratulations do. on your MSNBC gig. Well, congratulations. Unfortunately, we try to ask questions from both sides, Robert. We try not to take sides.